Today we'll show you how to diagnose and replace a starter motor for the uh, Toyota Matrix models between 2003 and 2008. What I have here is a Toyota Matrix model 2004 I borrowed from Scotty Kilmer. It's just kidding. I believe this should be the same for the Pontiac Vibe for the same year and the Toyota Corolla model 2003 to 2008. When your car does not start, it could be a few other problems other than your starter. So we will have to go over them first before we even begin to diagnose on the starter. If your car does not start, it could be one of the three major problems. It could be number one, a dead battery. Number two, anti-theft immobilizer problem. And finally, number three, a blown fuse or relay. So let's go over first and test the battery to make sure the battery is not dead. Use a voltmeter and measure the voltage of the battery. It has to be at least 12.4 volts in the summertime. In the winter, it might be less. My battery shows 12.7 volts, so it's still pretty good. Testing the voltage alone does not confirm you have a good battery. You will need to test the battery under load. I have a battery load tester here and a good battery under load should still be in the green zone. So I can confirm this battery is still good. If you don't have a load tester like this, you can just do the old fashioned way to put your battery under load. Put your voltmeter on your battery to measure the voltage. Then turn on all your headlights, high beam and rear lights. Roll down all four windows and then roll up all your windows back up again all at the same time while you're doing that look at the voltage drop on your battery it should stay around 12 volts or very close to that if it goes under 11 volts it's definitely dead if your battery is bad enough it might not be able to roll up all four windows at the same time with all the lights and high beam on in this case, it stays close to 12 volt under high load, so I can confirm the battery is still good. Next step is to check on the starter fuse, which is located inside the fuse box in the engine bay. And on a Toyota Matrix 2004 model, it is this fuse. And in this case, it's still good. The next reason why you cannot start the car that is because there is a problem with the electronic immobilizer system. Inside most modern car keys, there is a security chip that communicates with the car's security system and authenticates it before you can start the car. If the chip in your key is broken, then you cannot start your car. And in this case, I can hear the motor spinning when I try to start the car, so it's not a problem with the key's security chip. So now we can move on and check on the starter. There's one trick to get a bad starter going when your car does not start is to get a hammer and bang on the starter slightly while at the same time trying to start the engine. In some cases, that might be enough to get the starter started. This might be a lifesaver if you're stranded in the middle of nowhere with a bad starter. You don't really need a hammer, just pick up a piece of rock on the side of the road and bang on the starter while you're trying to start the car. Though this is a two-man job because you will need to have one person inside okay, the car go. to start the ignition while at the same time another person outside the car banging on the starter. And in this case, the starter actually started while I bang on the starter. So I can confirm that we have a bad starter. Alright, it's time to replace the starter. And the very first thing we gotta do is to remove the battery terminals. The location of the starter on this car is right underneath the manifold. It is very cramped here and there is not a lot of room to wiggle around for me to access the bolts that secure the starter. So what I've got to do is remove this fan housing and that will give me some space to work on the starter. You can get away with not removing this fan housing to replace the starter but it is very easy to remove this fan housing, it only takes a few minutes and that will make my job a lot easier. There are only two bolts that hold this assembly together. One bolt right here on this side and there's another bolt right there. 
You got two bolts out. These are 10 millimeter bolts. Now I have to do is to disconnect the hose and also disconnect the fan connector down here. Removing the fan cable is a little bit tricky. There is a latch right here at the top of the connector. So you have to push your screwdriver in here and then pry it out a little bit and then you can just pull it out. So this is the latch at the top of the connector where you have to push it down in order to disengage the uh, latching mechanism. And then this entire housing will come out just like that. Now we have a lot more room to work on the starter and it only took me about three minutes to remove this fan housing. So there are only two bolts that hold the starter together and this is the new starter that I bought from eBay only about $40 so it's pretty cheap and I don't have to return the core so I can keep my old starter. So we've got a bolt over here and have another bolt on this side but you can see on this side it's got some threads that means the bolt goes from this side and then for this one the bolt goes from this side and on the car the first bolt is right here the second bolt is going from this side so it's behind this uh, manifold assembly for the electrical connection there are only two connections this one here goes to the positive of the battery and this is the connector that goes to the ignition and that's it we go ahead and remove the first bolt right here bolt size is 14 millimeter Here's the bolt. Next step is to remove the electrical connectors. So this is the uh, nut that holds the cable to the battery. And then there's another connector down here. And for this nut, the size is 13 millimeter. All right, for the cable that goes to the ignition, the connector right here, it's a little bit tricky. And you have to push down on this plastic here, okay? and. Uh, to disengage the uh, plastic latch in order to pull out uh, this connector. The location of the second bolt is all the way behind all of this. But you can see through the hole here, okay, behind this hole, and I can reach it with my finger, and it's right here. And for this, I'm gonna need socket size 14 and a four inch extension. This bolt is very tight and I don't have enough leverage with my ratchet here, so I'm going to use my extension bar. Now the starter should come out just like that. Now it's time to install a new starter. Um, all you have to do is just to do the reverse and uh, you can just put it right back in. I'm not gonna bore you to death with that. There's one thing you have to be careful when you secure this bolt to the uh, battery terminal uh, is that this stud here is metal copper. So um, just don't over tighten this because copper is very soft and uh, you can strip this very easily. One tip when you're trying to put this back in, install the top bolt first and you can see it's already in there and don't tighten it, just keep it loose. And now I can install the second bolt on the bottom here. Alright, we're finally done. Check that out. Let's give it a try. Am I? Check that out. You see that one? Brand new. Brand new. Right here. Wanna try? Okay. Key inside the car. You'll be the first one to try it. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't explode. Let me back up a little bit. <laughs> Go ahead. 
One, two, three.